comes at the request of our police chief. It would add a new section. I'm going to say it one more time. If you have questions or you want to have a side conversation, take it outside. I can get more when you throw up if we want. Thank you. Alrighty then. Not that I'm getting tired, but we've got some more stuff to do, folks. Okay, so, you know what, I think the easiest thing I'm going to do, I'm going to call the police chief if he doesn't mind. Give a quick synopsis, because you've already done everything else in And, um, and then we'll open it for public comment. So just like this, and then Hold on a second, Bob. Tell me, we need you to be sitting down taking notes, please, for the public hearing. Thank you. We have a few apartments in town that are, that are nuisance to the police and to their neighbors. And one of them recently has turned into a heroin den where we've made multiple arrests on this building. The Trevor County Drug Task Force has been made arrests in this building, as have the U.S. Marshals recently made arrests on this building. We've notified the landlords for this building and other buildings when their tenants have been a nuisance to the police and their neighbors in the past. What this one is here does, not only allows us to go after the tenants, but now allows us to go after the landlords that they've been properly notified that they have nuisance tenants. So it puts the landlords and the owners of an apartment building on notice that they could be held responsible if they allow and they, they allow to have uh, nuisance tenants remain within those apartments. Simple as that. All right, so we're going to open the public portion, Ms. Crozier, for comment. As a property owner and taxpayer in the town, I am very much in favor of this because I've already had problems with budding properties nearby that have been a problem. Um, I had one property near me where they had huge bonfires and it was so bad in the summertime, it would set off my smoke detectors. Fire department didn't seem to think it was such a big deal, but the police, uh, sergeant, the sergeant you had, came down and dealt with some of the problems. There are a couple of things you're going to have to deal with. One of them is this third paragraph, habitual nuisance property. It says any rental property, you've got to strike the word rental, because there are single family properties that are a nuisance as well. Okay? That's one. Just strike that. Then in add to article, the very last one, um, you can't find them $250 just because they have one nuisance activity. I think you have to add to that any person who shall violate any provision after being deemed a habitual nuisance property, the habitual nuisance property then shall, upon notification, be subject to a civil forfeiture fine. They've got to be deemed a, a habitual property, nuisance property, first before you can start assigning them civil fines. My thoughts. Thank you. I think you'll see, if you look at um, the sections before that, it spells out how you become a nuisance property and how it takes four or more nuisance events in a 12-month period to become, so that your, your, your nuisance event doesn't occur, right, Bob and Zell? Correct, yeah. So, so number five in that case, then it'll is be your first, right. For the I think it's just a matter of clarity. Just make it clear. Gotcha. Okay. I'm sure the police would use proper discretion not to find them the first time. We would hope. <laughs> I would hope you don't so have too. Have the <laughs> we do want to make it clear as well, so thank you for that. Any other comments? Larry. Hey, Larry. I'm just curious, uh, I agree with this, but what can a landlord do to evict them? Uh, can you just can stop, you just stop the eviction process? But unfortunately, we find that some of the landlords, the absentee landlords, and they're, from up, they're not from the community, so they just really don't care about their apartments. Okay. All they care about yeah. is the, the monthly rent coming. Yeah. All right. So they can do something about it. Of course they can. Yes. They or could, but they're choosing. Some of them are choosing not to. That's the problem. That we, that's why we adopted the, the housing standards to begin with. There's a number of them that 
were renting apartments in the village specifically um, that were just a deplorable condition that and they were getting top rents for them and there was no heat in some cases and it just okay and so I think this is an answer to a problem that the chief has had ongoing Tony what do you do with these landlords that are a stater? I mean, he's not even a resident of the state of New Hampshire. It's like Massachusetts. Uh, how, how would you go after him? Well, go we'll warrant and complaint and send him a civil forfeiture notice. Uh, if that doesn't work, then there's a small claims action. Uh, well, so there is ways to get well, them. Well, there are ways to get them, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just like if anybody commits any other infraction to another resident of the town, you can still go after them. The thing is, the town needs to be willing to actually do that and to back the chief up. And, and, and I think there's an appetite, at least on this board, to do that. Well, the next one, but this one, anyway. Any other comments on, uh, on this? This is the easy one for the night, I guess. It doesn't cost anything, so. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, if there's no other public comment, I'm going to close the public hearing at 810. And, unless there's any objection from the board, we're going to start our weekly select board meeting. <laughs>